All right, so that is version control. Now we have something kind of similar to version control, but it's called variance. Variance is kind of the uh, more good-looking cousin to version control. Variants are a flexible way for you to maintain different variations of an object. They are a great way for you to keep multiple concurrent versions of content. In other words, every variant is active. Every variant could be publishable at any given time. So you can have multiple concurrent versions of objects if you go with the variance route. You don't have to flip-flop between active and inactive. Now with variance, you, you define why you need the variant. We refer to that as defining your criteria. There's, there's a reason, obviously, for you to have variants. For example, you want to have multiple variations of content for different releases that are coming out or different countries that you're doing business in, or maybe different platforms that you're writing documentation for. So you decide what criteria you uh, need to use variants. Now once you define that criteria, then whenever you publish from Authorit, you then set up a criteria filter that says, I want to publish the book based on this platform, or I want to publish the book for this particular office location, or for this particular audience. So you can flip-flop between publishing your baseline version of your content and then the variant version of your content. And we'll take a look at how you would set up the criteria and use that criteria filter in a few moments. All right. So why would you use variants? A good reason to use variants is if you have some documentation that may change by the location, by the platform, by the version, for example, uh, perhaps a branding scheme. Going back to that OEM example, let's say you want to publish your book and you want it to have a certain branding scheme when you publish it for this audience and a different branding scheme when you publish it for another audience. And variance is, is a, a perfect way for you to achieve that. Now keep in mind, what, we're, what our goal here is, our reason for using variance, is so that you only have to create the one book object so that you don't need to create multiple book objects, all right? So our, our ultimate goal with using variants is we're maintaining content in just the one book, so we only have the one book to manage, all right? That's, that's kind of our, our reuse strategy, our goal for using variants here. All right, so you will define the criteria that suits your purposes, and we'll take a look at how to set that criteria up in a moment. So let's compare variants versus version control. With version control, you can only have one version active at a time. In other words, you can only publish one object at a time. It is great for making proposed changes to an object that you just like to stage in your library that you're not ready to publish. And you would make those proposed objects active when you are ready to publish them. It's not a, a great solution for you if you have to maintain multiple concurrent versions of your documentation, where let's say on the same day you have to publish the versions for version 1, 2, 3, and 4. Well, if you were going the versioning route, then you would have to first make the version 1's active, then the version 2's, then the version 3's, then the version 4's, and then publish after each time you go through that active step. Well, with variants, you don't have to go through those additional steps because version 1, 2, 3, and 4 are always active, and you just need to set your criteria filter when you publish to say, I want to publish version 2 right now. I feel like publishing version 3. All right. Now with variants, you can have multiple variants active at any time 
It's great for you to maintain multiple variations of content. All right, so let's get into how to actually create variants. One thing you have to know up front is the variant states. Just like version control had statuses, variants have different states. And they are the standard state, which is an object without a variant. These are the objects that we've been working with so far. Then once you create a variant of an object, you're going to start to see some little icons display next to that object from the folders list here. Starting off with this one here, this gold cube with the green plus sign on it. That is the icon associated with the primary state. The primary object is your original or baseline object. Your object without criteria associated with it. Now your variant object is the variation of the original object. This is the object that you've written specifically for a certain country or a certain office or a certain platform or a certain release. This is your variant version. So you've got your primary object, which is your original or baseline version. Then you've got your variant object. This is the object that is different from the parent. It's been customized according to your criteria. All right, so how variants work. Variance is actually a variable. It is just a variable with a special tag associated with it. So what you will do is create your variant variable. And you'll do so in the administrator module. So in a few minutes, we'll crack open the administrator module and create a new variable there. So you'll go into the administrator module, create your variant criteria. In this case, uh, we're going to create a variant for country. Let's say that we are a global organization and we write uh, documentation that is specific to each country that we do work for. All right. And we also have an HR group that has to write employee policies for all the different countries that we have offices in. So our requirement for variance or our criteria is for country. Now when we set up our country variable, we will set it up as a list of values variable. The list of values variable is that type of variable where you could select an assignment from a list of options. You always want to be uh, a variant to be a list of values variable. You do not want it to be a text-based variable because authors could enter in different uh, names for their criteria, different capitalization or spacing, and you'll just have a mess in the long run. So as a best practice, you will want to have a list of values variable where the values are all of the various countries that you do business in. Or let's say that you have variants by platform, then the, the platform values would be all of the different platforms that you write documentation for, such as, say, SQL and Oracle. Now, to designate this variable as a variant, we would then select this checkbox here. This is a variant criteria. This will then unlock the variant functionality inside of Authorit. So, you're not actually going to see the variant options in Authorit until you have at least one variable that has this checkbox selected. So if you've been looking around in the student libraries and trying to find variance uh, tasks, you're not going to find any until you have at least one variable set up with this checkbox. That basically unlocks the variance feature in Authorit. All right, so we define our criteria. All right, and then we will assign it to our objects. Now, in order to start assigning criteria to our objects, you have to make a decision. The decision is, what is my primary content written for? 
right? What, what is my baseline or primary content written for in terms of what, what type of documentation is it? Let's go back to our country example. Let's say that our baseline or primary documentation has been written for the U.S. office. So if any of the content in that book must be different for another office, then I would create a variant and then assign the criteria to it, for example, France, Germany, or Japan. But my primary content is written for my U.S. office. So if I were to publish my content without assigning any variants to it, that would be the content for the U.S. office. Similarly, up here for a platform, let's say that my baseline content has been written for the Windows platform. And if I need content that is written for a different platform, then that is when I start using variants and assigning criteria to it. For example, Unix, Linux, or Macintosh. All right, so you have to make a decision on what your baseline or primary content is written for. Last but not least, when you actually go to publish your content, you will then set your filter criteria, which will display inside of your book object. And you can select your variant and then assign which value you would like to publish. In this case, we are publishing our country for uh, Bermuda in this case, all right? So what will happen is all the content inside of our book will be uh, updated according to whichever objects have our Bermuda criteria associated with it. So the contents here are dynamically updated according to which variant we select here. So we don't have to worry about selecting objects and saying make them active, make them inactive, and so on. We set our criteria filter here. Author it will automatically update all the relationships that those objects are in with the Bermuda version, and then we publish that content.